Hi, my name is George here, and today we have a very special guest. Hi, my name is Leah. I'm currently working as a registered nurse here in one of the hospitals in uh, Westchester County, which is part of New York City. So currently, I'm working in oncology unit slash med surgical unit. So um, I moved from the Philippines to the United Kingdom in October 2009, and in Sorry, um, I already stopped my application going to the U.S. And I spoke to my agency saying to them that um, I don't want to pursue. Can you please kindly close my case? Um, and, you know, I'm stable here in, in the U.S. And they respected that. I'm happy with that. And they said, you know, we have loads of um, nurses who didn't pursue their application here in the U.S. And they respect that. And then came 2017, wherein um, I received a letter from directly from the um, United States uh, Embassy, wherein they're saying that they, they had my application and they noted that I have not pursued it. And it looks like to me, it's like a second chance going to the U.S. And if if for some reason I don't want to pursue, they will definitely close it. So it's like a second calling for me. So um, I did spoke to my husband. And during that time, back in 2017, we were um, British citizen then. So I was like, if we don't like to to you know, if you don't like the life in the United States, we can always go back. But actually, I want to grab this opportunity. I went to the UK as a nurse, okay? You have all the um, kind of like benefits, should we say, right? Um, you have the seven weeks um, annual leave, okay? In the US, when, let's talk about the annual leave. And um, that's one kind of like the pros in United Kingdom. Whereas, here in the United States, when I first came here, I was under an agency. And with an agency, you're only allowed, um, I would say, two and a half weeks of annual leave. So that's one thing. However, um, they have the thing where if you don't take it, they will pay you back. Okay? So if, if say, for example, in a year, I did not take my two weeks, they pay you back. And like I don't, I think in the UK we don't do that, right? But again, it's two, it's only two and a half weeks, and then um, that is mostly the terms in an agency. Um, in when you work in the hospital, you accrue your hours. So, say for example, you work certain hours in a month, you have nine hours of what we call as um, EBT, where it is like equivalent to an annual leave. So, the more you work, the more hours of leave you get. So that app, that's how it is. Um, in terms of, um, I would say, um, maternal leave, I believe. Um, UK is far more, you know, um, they have far more leeway in terms of maternal leave as compared to here, where it is only two months to three months. Okay. In terms of, would you like to hear the pay in terms of pay? Okay, let's put it this way. So I am paid now as a, a regular staff nurse, I would say three times my pay as a band six in the, in the UK. Um, in terms of healthcare, healthcare we don't we kind of like pay through our tax in the UK. Here in the US, you need to find a reputable company. Like for me, um, I work in the hospital. Hence, I am under a union. Um, a union would then pay for your representation. A union would pay for all, also for your um, insurance purposes. So you need to find that if you go to a like agency nurse you don't have a um, health insurance and health insurance in here can be very very costly um, we have what we called as um, copay we're in um, some portion of your hospitalization say 80% will be paid by your um, insurance company and 20% you need to shelter like one time I need to go to the emergency room in the hospital I'm working with. So they had one emergency room and they just, because I was having some kind of like nosebleed then because of the mass and everything, I thought it was COVID, but it's not. Um, that that um, visit alone cost my insurance a thousand dollars and I still need to pay. Yeah. And that was like how many hours? Um, an hour of visit? 
um, a thousand dollars, um, more than a thousand dollars actually, and I still need to pay a copay of seventy-five bucks. So personally, I can only attest for New York, and um, in the in the United Kingdom, I live in Luton, which is at around forty-five minutes. It's like similar here in the United States, where I live in Westchester area, and that is like. 30 40 minutes away from manhattan but the cost of, the cost of living here is a lot i would say three four times fold than in the united kingdom why say for example um my rent my rent for a one bedroom is two thousand two hundred dollars sometimes especially in manhattan area because i have friends who lives in manhattan they pay extra for their parking and parking in there can cost on top of your rent it can cost uh one of my friends um is is paying 480 dollars for a parking alone plus the fact that their apartment up there will be like three thousand five hundred dollars um when i left the uk my um my mortgage then was only 450 pounds. Groceries, um, I would say I was spending like, uh, it depends on your lifestyle, but I was spending $100 per week. I tend to um, have that 100 pounds story a week in, in the UK. Same thing here in the, in the US. Um, so same, 100 to $150 for food and all that. Um, Phone wise is very expensive. Like in the UK, I was only, I think I was spending like 60, 70 um, pounds for my phone. And here, and, in, and internet in there is like what, 80 pounds? But here we pay um, around 300 for the broadband, for the phone, and all that. Um, in terms of like um, nursing, both of it has got autonomy and when i came here in the united states here in new york i work in a nursing facility which is a long-term um, health facility and i work as a um, wound care nurse and um, once a week i do have my wound doctor just once a week but the full week is going to be on my shoulder so if the doh comes if the state comes it will be me who will answer for the whole of the facility so it's going to be um, my registration, we call them registration here, who will be backing up the whole facility. So that's how it works. Um, and like in the good thing in the United Kingdom, there's loads of people backing you up, you know. Uh, before, when I first came to the hospital, we're just allowed, gosh, twice, uh, two masks per week. And now we are allowed like um, one mask per day. That's how it works. Um, um, the COVID here in the United States, especially here in New York, is going downhill. So I really hope because we're kind of like having the face opening. We're on phase two at the moment. So hopefully I'm really praying that we're not going for like second wave like some experts are predicting. Now each state is different, like Florida is different. Um, there are loads of opportunities here in the United States too, as well as in the UK. Um, if if fast pace is not for you, um, then you can go uh, somewhere. In terms of United Kingdom, United Kingdom is a is a good place. You know, I always would be thankful for my experience in the United Kingdom. In terms of UK. Um, I have much respect for UK, absolutely. Um, in terms of, I feel like long term, long term in terms when you grow old, I think United Kingdom has got better kind of environment um, over as compared here in New York. I mean, um, a lot of, if you even Google it, New York will be like one of the worst, um, worst area to retire. Okay, because not because the taxes here is like overwhelming. Um, always remember Manong knows. Manong knows best, put your worries to rest when staying in the United Kingdom.